With the soft touchdown, India becomes the first country to land a probe at the moon's south pole, where ice could provide water, oxygen and fuel for future missions. Now to better understand what's next for Chandrayaan 3, we have with us on the broadcast Professor Dibyendu Nandi, Head of the Centre of Excellence in Space Sciences India. Also on the broadcast with us, D. Ragunandan, researcher from the Delhi Science Forum. Professor Nandi, no disputing that this is an exciting moment for Indian space exploration. But the polar regions of the moon, many parts lie in a completely dark region without sunlight and we're told temperatures can go below 230 degrees Celsius. Does this create difficulty in the operation of instruments for us? Uh, good morning, uh, first of all, and good morning to our little, two little friends uh, on the moon that we have since yesterday. Um, yeah, so the polar regions uh, are, are mostly dark uh, because uh, of the tilt uh, of the moon. And uh, the advantage of that, of course, is that you expect to find uh, ice uh, in the polar regions, which you can uh, mine and you can use for a, for a lunar base. Uh, but given the, the extreme temperatures, the very low temperatures uh, that, uh, that polar regions can plunge down into, um, this could be a problem for the instruments, for the electronics um, that is there in the rover and the lander. And this is one of the reasons that you don't really have a very large or a long lifetime for the instruments. We really have 14 days. You know, the sun is rising on the on the lunar south pole today and it's going to set in 14 days. And so the mission was perfectly timed to, to, to land in a way that we get all of those 14 days to get our science and the work done. Right, the mission was perfectly timed indeed, it seems. D. Raghunandan, now with the Chandrayaan-3, India has also demonstrated familiarity with the major types of interplanetary spacecraft, orbiters, landers and rovers. That's a huge technical feat, right? Indeed. Uh, and I think that is uh, the main reason why uh, scientists and technologists in this country are particularly uh, excited uh, about this uh, stage that India has reached, which is very important because in the first 30 or 40 years of India's space programs, we were essentially looking inwards at the Earth through remote sensing satellites, low Earth orbit uh, missions, communications uh, satellites, and so on. In the past uh, close to two decades, India's space program has started looking outwards. We are now slightly better off as a country. We can afford slightly more uh, uh, investment in curiosity-driven uh, science and going to the moon is one of the major steps in that direction. The orbiter, the lander and the rover are all instruments which will help us in achieving the objectives of uh, discovering new knowledge uh, from the moon, knowledge about not only the moon but about the universe, the origins of the moon, uh, etc. Uh, and these technologies, which Chandrayaan-3 has demonstrated, the ability to land softly on an extraterrestrial body and the ability to deploy a rover will not only be important for the moon, but will be important in years to come in exploring other uh, planets uh, like Mars, uh, etc. And this, these technologies will form the nucleus or the basis on which further technologies will be developed. Therefore, the importance of Chandrayaan-3 is not just in Chandrayaan-3, but in what it portends for uh, the future space programs of India. Indeed. Professor Nandi, then taking a broader view of time, Chandrayaan-3 actually sits at a very important juncture because India is also now a member of the Artemis Accords. Right. I mean, this is a cathartic moment for India and its place uh, in the world. I mean, you can think of it as, as a mission, the success of Chandrayaan mission, opens up the doors for having India right in front where the information, the science that we gather from the Chandrayaan 3 mission, the lander and the rover, will now help guide and inform the missions uh, from the US, from other countries who are part of the Artemis Accord. So it really 
places India in a pole position. We are the first country, let's not forget that. We are the first country to reach the Lunar South Pole. Uh, this is amazing and a resounding validation of the science and, invest, uh, science and technology investments uh, of our governments. Right. Dira Gurandan, India is also looking forward to its first mission to the International Space Station next year in collaboration with the US as part of agreements between our Prime Minister and the US President last month. What are your thoughts? Yes, uh, so there will be several uh, missions that follow Chandrayaan-3, not necessarily to the moon, like the International Space Station, for example, uh, the Aditya L1 uh, mission. Uh, I think as part of the global community and as part of a small, relatively small group of nations with such capabilities as we have demonstrated, there are challenges and responsibilities that fall on India. The challenges for us are on the technological side to develop uh, heavier launch vehicles, to improve our lander capabilities, including uh, the weight of the lander and therefore of instruments it can carry. And the next step will be to develop a returnable lander, a lander which can land on the surface, come back to an orbiter and head back uh, to Earth. These will be very important developments towards which we will make. But I would also like to point to, since you mentioned the Artemis Accords, uh, we've heard the Prime Minister when he greeted the nation after the success of Chandrayaan 3, and he reminded uh, the people of India as well as of the world that this is a success not just for India, but for all of humanity. Indeed. And I think India has a very important role to play there in the international community and among spacefaring nations to ensure that space is treated as a common good. The moon and other extraterrestrial objects are treated as places for the common good to develop knowledge for the benefit of all humanity. And I think India can play a big role also in emphasizing that uh, the moon and other extraterrestrial uh, bodies should not be utilized for commercial exploitation, mineral exploitation, which may have destructive uh, potentials Absolutely. in the future. I think that would be a major responsibility that falls on India's shoulders. Absolutely. Well, the global space launch market is expected to grow from the current $9 billion this year to more than $20 billion in 2030. And Chandrayaan-3 signals the launch of India's time in space exploration. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on the broadcast.